I feel pretty special to be here. And when I came here, there was no, um, <laughs> Hey, Blue, come on, Blue. Come on, come on, yeah, boy. Hi, I'm Pete. I live off grid near Raglan on Mount Kariori. I'm Ben, that's my dad, and this is my bird, Polly. We came out here about 35 years ago. Nobody really wanted it because there's no electricity in the dirt road. You know, no mail delivery and rubbish collection and no services. I thought it was the best place ever. I work here on the farm and we have sheep and cattle and that's sort of what I do for work. Just awesome place, got the best soil in the, in the country. Beautiful trees, bush all around us. Ocean, great fishing, diving. Some of the best in the world. Everything's here. It's just a great place. I came here when I was about nine, ten-ish, and uh, it was a bit different at first from living with my mum, but uh, over time I got used to it, and it was real good because I had the freedom to do whatever, and it was like uh, lit fires and whatever, and got to play with guns when he was around, <laughs> that sort of thing, and it's good fun. We live in here and we also share it with having our sheep shearing shed upstairs there. Yeah, it works good. We're comfortable here. It's really, it's just all <laughs> open plan except for a bedroom at the end there, which is Ben's and my one's on that side under the top floor. It's like two bedrooms and everything else is open plan. <laughs> this is our coal range. We just mainly use it in winter when it's cold. It heats the hot water, does the cooking and heats the room up. And it's really good. And the food always tastes really different, tastes better off the fire than the stove, yeah. When I came here, there was no electricity, no power. My neighbour Mark and Wendy, they came here after us later on and they got the solar power. Yeah, I sort of saw how it worked and how good it was and I thought one day I'll, I'll get it because it's great. <laughs> it's like you're independent, you're in control of it, no one else, you know, has anything to do with it and it's just a wonderful thing. We have all the luxuries that we never had before. It's pretty good. I'm getting quite into like carving and that and I can use all my power tools now. I don't have to wait till when we turn the generator on. It's good just having the option there. With Mark, he did the installation and we helped him all the way, you know, and it was really good. It was a team effort and we, we learned a lot, a lot helping him doing it at my work at the university about three years ago um, we needed to put some solar panels into one of our new laboratories for where we sort of tried to upgrade our electrical engineering program and make sure that the students were exposed to solar power and i'd hunted around then and discovered grid free as a great place to buy solar panels from so we bought some there for the university and so when Pete started asking me about you know where we might get the right setups from grid free was the place that I went very first and we did lots of comparisons with uh, uh, you know other systems to make sure that we were getting the right uh, value for money but certainly uh, there was really no no question it seems the, the straightforward way of getting a sort of an uncluttered system and exactly what you need and so we looked around the property to sort of figure out where it might be that we could put these panels. Because there are trees around the house, then this looked like the nearest spot to that shed, which had almost unobstructed sunlight 52 weeks of the year. So we decided this would be the place to put the panels, although it created the slight complication of putting the panels this far away from the shed, meant Pete had to buy a fairly heavy cable for us to connect the panels back to the shed in order to avoid the power losses that otherwise would have, would have happened. Well, this is our control room for our um, battery bank and our controller for our solar system. We got flasher and my friend Mark said, we want an up-to-date generator. <laughs> This new one we've got, it's a modern one, and it has computerized stuff in it to hook into solar power. Well, this controller, it can be programmed. So when it comes down to the minimum 48.5 volts for the battery, this generator will switch on on its own to top the battery up and then switch off. And we have the changeover switch in the corner here for our generators. It's, we turn it right for the diesel one 
and left for the petrol one, whichever one we want to use. And this is the on off button for the generator. We can turn it on and off here or in our shed where we live. Yeah, we're pretty lucky, all right. Got all these luxuries. Maybe have a backup generator in case, you know, being solely on solar. As uh, we get real heavy fog here because we're on the mountain and sometimes we need to top it up. And I've heard of people who don't have that and it's a bit of a struggle sometimes. So yeah, having that little bit of backup with the petrol is all right, I reckon. And these batteries, they're all sealed and it's not like the old batteries where you've got to check the water and that. <laughs> See nothing. Hopefully they go the distance. I've heard that they're really good. Yeah, as long as you do the right thing by them. Honestly, I can, I can get a better system. I love it, it's great. It does everything. I don't recommend it to anybody. I would tell somebody who wants to live off grid and do it. It's the best thing ever, it is. So we've got bright lights up here now. <laughs> this is our mezzanine floor above our living area where we share our sheep. Yeah, the sheep come up through the sliding door at the back here. And then they come around, they come around the back here into the catch pen. And this is where they're held for the shearer. He pulls them out one at a time and he shears them. Yeah. And when they're shorn, they go down the chute down there and go back outside. Ben, he picks up the wool and puts it in the press. And when the press is full, we make the bales. And we have enough of them, we ring them up and he comes with his truck and he takes them, he, he buys them off us, takes them. Yeah, they make stuff out of the New Zealand wool, all the best stuff. And then when these two are full, this one comes up and goes on top and then it gets all pressed into one and that makes the bale of the sheep's wool or, or that one there like lamb's wool. Yeah, the sheep's wool today is it's not worth anything really. It costs more to share the sheep really than you get for the wool. You know, it's a bit sad really, but hopefully it'll come back. I sort of taught myself and um, asked other people that I knew for advice when I needed it and they was always happy to pass the knowledge on to me and basically that's how I sort of learned to farm. Yeah and same for the water system, the gravity system, just sort of learned as we went. When I had a problem I'd ask you know people that I knew because you know they were they were doing it and yeah and got the problem sorted. Out here each day there's always work, there's always <laughs> things to do, it never ends. There's always fences to fix, to repair, weeds to spray, and you know, you've got to drench the sheep at times, and the cattle, and get the sheep crutched when they get dirty, and shear them at least once a year. There's always things to fix. <laughs> I'm making a handle for this ax head I got given. I was given it by my sister. So I was thinking if I put this new handle on it, I was going to give it to my nephew. And um, I'm not particularly good and it's a bit rough at the moment, but uh, you know, all the practice helps and I'm using all my new tools and that, you know. Don't usually use them, but I thought I'll give it a try. What I've been doing so far is using the chisel, my saw, my little ax to rough it out. And then after this, I'm going to go over it with a planer, hopefully make it usable. <laughs> this is our washout. This is our bath. And it's made in 1911. It's a really old cast iron bath. It's cool. It's real comfortable. Lots of room. And over here is our um, old concrete copper we had first that we were boiling our water for the bath. And our bucket there, we used to bucket the water from the copper to the bath because we tried siphoning it, but the water was so hot, the hoses just collapsed. Years later, we got flash and we got the little gas Cali font on the wall. And so now we just turn on a tap and we got the hot water. There's our washing machine for our washing now because we've got the solar power. It's great. <laughs> we still use our little hand wringer sometimes when we've been to the beach and we rinse our salt out of the clothes. This was one of my favorite achievements because it was just so good to have it. 
we've just decorated over the years with bits of junk from the beach and around the country. <laughs> when we didn't have the electricity, we didn't miss out. We still had our gas fridge and our gas cooking and the fire to cook and heat the water. But now having the electricity, it's just more convenient. I've always been happy to make it work whatever with whatever I had at the time, you know. First, it was a bit of a struggle to catch up with my mates in town and that, but uh, once I got a bit fit enough, like, I could ride my bike into town and it wasn't so bad. And uh, that was really the only thing. And I don't have Wi-Fi or anything, and my mates struggle with that, but uh, it's just how it is. Yeah. I like those prairie trees. Yeah. Because they have the berries for the birds, the flower, and the green, you know, the leaves all year round. They're amazing. And my old neighbour, Mr. Jackson, he told me that they use them for strainer posts in the ground and they last 100 years. Yeah, real hard wood. And we had one down the road tip over a while last winter, or well, the winter before, and we cut it up for the firewood. And I tell you what, it was like picking up lumps of rock just heavy, beautiful wood, and it burned hot, you know, like hot. Best wood I've ever burnt for the fire. Heaps of heat. Here's our little garden. <laughs> overgrown. Overgrown. But the fruits there. And the two rows that are completely overgrown, they, yeah, they were potatoes, potatoes. but they're, uh, they died off, just waiting to dig them now. And there's some silver beet and cucumbers. We grew enough potatoes in Coomera to last a year. Yeah, for me and him. Oh, we give a few away, eh? Yeah. To our friends. That was my old caravan after I had a tent. I had a tent and then I got that. And it was luxury to stay in before I had a shed. I help when I can on the fences and that. He does um, running repairs <laughs> on the sheep yards and that when we're, when, we're, when we're working and things, bits and pieces break, he fixes them. <laughs> Yeah, he's a great help. I'm proud. <laughs> Not many people can just go hunting, but I can just walk up the paddocks and it's right on the bush and, you know, go out whenever. Or with him when it's with the gun, but um, I got me a bow and arrow recently and I've been using that. Not the best, but uh, getting better. <laughs> That's a lot of fun, you know. Some of the things I hunt for, mainly rabbits and possums, you know, small game like that. And if I see a pig, I won't turn it down though. <laughs> Well, my favourite feature is the house site up there. It's got great views and you can just see everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I really love about this lifestyle is uh, living on the land, having a garden, killing my own animals and stuff, you know, like to get the food, I'm not buying it. and It's just all there. It's pretty good. And, and some of the cleanest water in the world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful water. Living off grid, it can be hard, but it's the life out here in the outbacks. <laughs> it's great. I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it for anything. It's healthy, it's fresh air. We love it. All my original neighbours out here, they all been here since the 1800s, and they all live a long time. They've all lived a long time, well into their 90s. It's just a healthy life. I just love being out here because it's free and it's got all the space and. It's just back to nature. It's just great. We've got everything. We've got everything here. Now we're in luxury. <laughs> we're in luxury now. Look at you. What's happening? What's happening?